What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Easy Stock Investing. In today's video, we're going to be talking about General Mills stock, ticker symbol GIS. We're going to be using our five simple metrics to analyze General Mills stock to help figure out whether or not it's a buy at current prices. We're also going to take a look at some analyst price targets for General Mills stock. And together, we're going to try to figure out whether or not those price targets are realistic. So if you guys like today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and help me out with that YouTube algorithm. And if you're new around here and you want to get notified every time I upload a video, all you got to do is hit that red subscribe button and join the family of investors. And as always, I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. If you're going to invest in any stock we talk about on this channel, you must first do your own research and do your own due diligence to form your own conclusions. Also, if you want some free stocks from Robinhood or Webull, those links are in the description below if you'd like to take advantage of those. But without further ado, let's hop right into General Mills stock. All right, so for those of you that don't know what General Mills is, it's an American multinational manufacturer and marketer of branded consumer foods sold through retail stores. Some of its well-known North American brands include Gold Medal Flour, Betty Crocker, Yoplait, Totinos, Pillsbury, and Old El Paso. All right, so before we go ahead and take a look at our first metric, which is uh, price to earnings ratio, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what General Mills stock has been doing lately, okay guys? And you can see over the last month here, the stock is down over 4%. Over the last six months, the stock is up 0.29%. Over the last year, the stock is down over 10%. And over the last five years, the stock is down over 18%, okay? It has not been a very good five years for this stock, all right? So we go ahead and we'll take a look at General Mills price to earnings ratio, which currently sits at just over a 15, okay? Now we'll compare that with the uh, S&P 500's price to earnings ratio, which currently sits at 8.49, okay? That tells me that compared to the S&P, General Mills's price to earnings ratio seems to be a bit too high, now that can be offset with revenue growth, okay, or justified is what I should say. And that'll be our next metric we're going to get into. All right, so the second metric we're gonna look at is revenue growth, okay? And like I said, a higher price to earnings ratio can be justified in some situations by very consistent revenue growth, okay? So we're gonna start in the year 2018. You can see that General Mills grew their revenue by 0.77%. 2019, they grew their revenue by 7.15%. 2020, they grew it by 4.51%. In 2021, they grew it by 2.84%. So yes, they were consistently growing their revenue, not at a high percentage, but consistently growing it, which is what we wanna look for. I don't believe in this situation that it justifies the higher price to earnings ratio because I don't think the revenue growth was high enough but they are growing revenue, which is a good sign. The third metric we're gonna go ahead and take a look at is profit margin, okay? And ideally, you want a company to have 10% or above profit margin on a very consistent basis, okay, guys? So in 2018, you can see that General Mills' profit margin was over 13%, exactly where we want it to be. In 2019, it did drop just over 10%, but that's okay, we're still right in that ballpark. In 2020, back up to over 12%. Very nice, we like to see that. In 2021, still hanging right around 13%. So the profit margin is staying exactly where we want it to be with General Mills stock. The fourth metric we're gonna take a look at is profit growth. Because we know that if a company is consistently growing its profits, it's gonna be just fine in the long run, okay? So in 2019, General Mills grew their profit by almost 6%, okay? In 2020, they grew their profit by over 6%, almost 6.5%. 6 and, and in 2021, they grew their profit over 5%, okay? So consistent profit growth shows only good things for General Mills stock. The fifth and final metric is the one that throws up the red flag for me with General Mills stock, and that is current assets versus current liabilities. And remember guys, we think about that like money in a bank account, current assets, as money in our savings account and current liabilities as bills do, okay? And General Mills currently has current assets of 5,754,000 and current liabilities of 8,265,000, okay? 
they have way more <laughs> liabilities than they do assets. And that is not a very good sign for a company that passed every other metric that we've thrown at them in this video. That is not a good sign that throws up a major red flag to me with General Mills stock. So here we are over on tip ranks. We'll take a look at some analyst price targets for General Mills stock. Currently there are six analysts covering General Mills stock and they have it rated as a hold with two buy ratings, three hold ratings and one sell rating with an average analyst price target of $62 and 20 cents. And that price target implies 7.48% upside from current prices with the highest price target being $69 and the lowest price target being $53, okay? So if we hop back over here, we can see we're trading at $57.87 at this point in time. So we are right in the middle of where the analysts expect us to be, all right? So currently, what I see from these analyst ratings is they do not plan on a spike in General Mills stock anytime soon in either direction. So what did we learn while using our five simple metrics to analyze General Mills stock? We learned that their price to earnings ratio was high compared to the S&P 500. We learned that they consistently grew their revenue, however, not high enough to justify the elevated price to earnings ratio. We learned that their profit margins stayed at or above 10%, and they have consistently grown their gross profits over the last four years. However, we also learned that their balance sheet doesn't look the greatest, because they have more current liabilities than they do current assets. So General Mills currently has a dividend ratio of 3.53%. Now that is a very healthy dividend and would be a great addition to any dividend investing portfolio. That said, the analyst price target of $62 seems very, very realistic to me. Like I said, this would be a welcome addition to any dividend investing portfolio. However, and this is a big however, if you are looking for growth, do not invest in General Mills stock, okay? And I'm gonna show you exactly why. Over the past five years, General Mills stock is down 18.69%. Over the past five years, if you would have just invested in the Vanguard S&P 500, you would be up over 102%, okay? It's not even close, not even com comparable at all, people. You're going to invest at this point in the Vanguard ETF 10 times out of 10 rather than investing in General Mills if you are looking for growth, all right? But anyways, guys, that's gonna be the end of today's video. I wanna thank everybody who watched it all the way to the end. Leave me a little shout out down in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think about General Mills stock. Do any of you dividend investors have General Mills stock in your portfolio? If you guys like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and help me out with that YouTube algorithm. If you're new around here and you wanna get notified every time I upload a video, all you gotta do is hit that red subscribe button. If you guys want to take advantage of free stocks from Robinhood or Weeble, those links will always be in the description below. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day, and I hope to catch all of you in the next video. Peace.